Hey everyone, I'm back, and with an autopilot update. I found myself in San Jose a few weeks ago, and while there, I decided to recreate my original Navigate on Autopilot test video, but this time using software version 2019.12.1.2, which was the latest version at the time this was shot a few weeks ago. Uh, after getting back, I quickly received two updates in succession, and I'm now on 2019.20.1, but I haven't really noticed significant difference between the two builds in terms of capability, so let's just roll with this. As you can see, I'm also trying out a different camera setup for my autopilot test videos. Gone is the three camera setup that I was using previously, and here I'm just using a single camera. I don't know if I'll keep using this setup, but let me know in the comments below what you think. I feel like this view is much less visually confusing than the three camera setup. Being a new configuration, there are some quirks. The camera overall is very stable in this setup, but some of the vibration from the harsher jolts was still transferred to the camera, and because I was shooting in 4K, it seems like it caused the camera's rolling shutter to become really apparent, so let me know if that's too obnoxious. I'll keep experimenting with it and see if I can improve this. All right, let's get started. So here we have my Model 3 headed down 280 south in the right lane, headed towards the California 17 South interchange. Navigate on autopilot is running. The car is already in the far right lane and confirmationless lane change is enabled. As the car approaches the interchange, it slows. It's still fairly conservative when it comes to cornering speed, but the transition in and out of corners is now much better than it was initially. The slowing is not nearly as abrupt. It doesn't slow quite as much. It accelerates out of the corner a little bit quicker and a little bit earlier than it did before, and in general, the, the whole experience is just a lot smoother feeling. Coming up here, we have a series of merges and then a couple lane changes to get out of exit lanes. The lane that the car is currently in disappears, and you can see the car begins signaling to change lanes out of the lane that is disappearing, uh, however, it takes long enough to where the lane just kind of, you know, merges in anyway. With that merge complete, the car turns on the turn signal again to initiate a lane change, and for some reason it just gave up on that one and swerved back into the lane. A few moments later, it turns on the turn signal to try yet again. This time it deems it clear and goes ahead and moves over. It still needs to change lanes one more time to get out of these two exit only lanes. The overall quality of the lane change execution, so the speed at which it changes lanes and the smoothness of the lane change has been improving significantly. But despite these improvements, Navigate on Autopilot's lane change suggestions still seem to be purely reactive. There doesn't appear to be any planning for how to negotiate the traffic in front of the vehicle relative to the path that's been set. And here you can see that it identifies the vehicle in front of it as traveling significantly below the set speed, and so it begins a lane change to pass that vehicle, or really to just move into a faster lane. Autopilot does signal for quite a while before actually changing lanes. This can be viewed as either a good thing or a bad thing. It's, it's fairly cautious with lane changes, which makes sense at this point in its development. There was almost no traffic when I decided to film this, which made it very easy for Autopilot to execute automatic lane changes. When you find yourself in much denser traffic, that's when the system starts to have trouble, because again, it is very cautious. And that level of caution well, isn't necessarily very well respected by other drivers. It also has a bad habit of just turning on a turn signal when you're right next to someone, which just as a driver's etiquette thing is not something that people really do. If anything, it signals to drivers around you that you aren't paying attention. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done to help Autopilot telegraph what it's doing to drivers around it. Here we are approaching the California 17 South to 85 North interchange. When I first tested Navigate on Autopilot here, it had some problems with this interchange because it splits from one lane into two, which caused the car to swerve left and right as though it couldn't really pick a lane. This time, however, there wasn't really any swerving and the car hugged the left lane line, which put it in the left lane of the interchange. The car was smooth through the interchange, although a bit abrupt on the exit of the interchange, it veered hard right, and I think that was, again, because the lanes were coming together again, and it was in an unusually wide lane, and so maybe it tried to center itself, or I'm not entirely sure there. Coming off the interchange, there's a series of merges. The first merge was successful, though the lane change following the merge failed. I ended up taking control because the car was swerving left and right. Stepping up the difficulty, here we are on California 85 South, heading toward the California 17 North interchange. This interchange was the most difficult interchange that I had the car attempt last year. Under software version 2018.42.2.1, this interchange resulted in a 100% failure rate. I had to take over every time because Autopilot was not able to complete the lane change in the short amount of time that it had to execute it. How this interchange works is there's a loop and then a short gap where you must make a lane change to the left to continue on California 17 North. If you fail to complete this lane change, then you'll end up in another tight loop that dumps you off on California 85 North. So let's see how it goes. 
Just as before, the car slows significantly before entering the loop, though it is still traveling a little bit faster than my first attempt, and you can see it accelerates a bit as it progresses through the turn. While you're watching this, remember that autopilot in its current form does not make your car an autonomous car. It cannot drive the car for you. You are ultimately the one in control of the vehicle, so please keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Okay, here's the lane change. Moment of truth. Can it do it? Turn signal comes on. Car moves over. It did it. In my test last year, that interchange threw a high curvature detected warning every single time and failed to complete the lane change. I don't know whether or not Navigate on Autopilot would be able to complete that lane change if there were any meaningful traffic, but that will have to be a test for another time. Now we're approaching the California 17 North to California 280 North interchange, which involves a quick lane change to the right, which the car overshoots a little bit, then transitioning into a tight loop and merge onto 280. Just like with my first Navigate on Autopilot test video, I'm holding the wheel a little funny here. I'm holding it from the back and applying some torque that way, uh, just so that it's easier for you guys to see what the car is doing. As usual, Autopilot decelerates significantly before entering the loop and proceeds through the loop fairly cautiously, but begins accelerating on its way out of the loop. You may have noticed that the steering inputs made by Navigate on Autopilot in a high angle situation like this appear to be a little abrupt, a little jerky, well, that's because they are, and it is somewhat uncomfortable. The abruptness of the steering input can also lead to other issues like accidental disengagement if you actually have your hands on the wheel like you're supposed to. With the loop completed, autopilot begins very slowly accelerating onto the freeway. The acceleration here wasn't so slow that it was a problem, but it was, it was slow enough to make you wonder if there was something wrong. Speeding up the footage some here, autopilot moves into the correct lane for the exit, and then successfully exits the freeway. And yes, it does seem to have completely ignored that truck at the side of the road. Overall, I feel like the improvements that have been made to Autopilot since the initial release of Navigate on Autopilot have been very significant. Is it full self-driving? No, not at all. We're nowhere near that yet, but this is still promising improvement. Granted, I do feel like something needs to be done about the handoff when Navigate on Autopilot exits the highway. Rather than completely disabling the Autopilot system and shutting off TAC, it just turns off Navigate on Autopilot and then leaves the driver to completely disengage the rest of the system. If you as the operator don't realize that TAC is still running, you could end up having a very bad day when you encounter the stoplight at the end of the off-ramp. Getting back to that point on accidental disengagements, Tesla's driver monitoring system is somewhat primitive, relying primarily on torque applied to the wheel to detect the driver paying attention. The system also prompts you to keep your hands on the wheel and or to apply torque to the wheel to let it know that you're there. However, over the years, Tesla has made it easier and easier and easier to disengage the system by applying torque to the wheel. While the reduction of the torque required to deactivate the system does make the transition from auto steer to human steer much smoother, it does make it really easy to disengage the system whenever the system is trying to make any kind of meaningful steering angle input. If the operator doesn't realize that's what they've done, either they've missed the audio cue or, or what have you, they could end up no steering themselves into objects or cars. Here, for example, on that difficult 85 South to 17 North interchange, when the car signals to move over and then asks me to apply torque to the wheel to verify that I am there so that it will execute the auto lane change. Oh. Oh, oh, I must have accidentally disengaged it. I apply just a smidge too much torque in the wrong direction as it is applying a motion in the opposite direction and it disengages the system. I realize that there are other methods of interacting with the system that lets it know that you're there. However, those methods of interaction are not what the system prompts you for. I also encountered this merge situation when approaching the 17 South to 85 North interchange. Keep an eye on those two blue trucks on the right of the screen. They try to pass each other on the two-lane on-ramp and then stay riding next to each other as those two lanes become a single lane. In the process, the lighter blue truck accelerates and then tries to change lanes into the lane that I'm occupying. It isn't clear to me whether Autopilot would have intervened here and if it did when it would have intervened because I intervened before it did. And thanks to the right repeater feed on the Tesla dash cam, you can see that the blue truck actually got pretty close. So there you have it. The Autopilot system is getting better with each software release, but we are still a long way from anything remotely resembling full self-driving. So keep your eyes on the road and your hands on the wheel, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. And as always, I'll see you later.